one and all, ladies and gentlemen, esteemed panelists, and distinguished guests, welcome to this insightful discussion that promises to unravel the nuances of our topic today. We have gathered a diverse and accomplished group of experts who will lend their perspectives to enrich our understanding. In a world marked by constant change, it's imperative that we engage in thoughtful conversations about the challenges and opportunities that shape our present and future. Today's discourse, led by our esteemed panelists, will shed light on the topic, revisiting the debate on standardized testing in the era of chat GPT. Each panelist brings a wealth of experience and expertise, ensuring a dynamic and comprehensive exploration of the subject. Joining me today as panelists, I have Ms. Ruchika Sharma, Assistant Chief Executive Officer, DCM Group of Schools. Ms. Nitin Adua, Head Career Guidance Center, Shivnadu School, Noida. And Ms. Ritika Agarwal, College Counselor, Ebenezer International School, Bangalore. Once again, I welcome you all to a thought-provoking session where we delve into the perennial debate on standardized testing now in the era of chat GPT moderation. As we navigate the landscape of education and assessment, the integration of advanced technologies introduces both opportunities and challenges. In a world shaped by the rapid evolution of AI technologies, our scrutiny of standardized testing's relevance and efficacy in evaluating student learning and potential becomes increasingly vital. The prospect of AI aiding in test preparation and response formulation challenges educators to reconsider the role of these assessments, play, uh, the role that they play in shaping our educational landscape. So without further ado, let's delve into this discussion guided by the expertise of our esteemed panelists. To begin with, I would like to very briefly know about the views of each one of you on the topic, which is obviously the debate on the standardized uh, testing in the era of chat GPT. So to begin with, uh, Rucha Kaman, could you please share your views on this? A very, very good evening to all of you and wonderful viewers who are watching us today. It, it's, it's an amazing um, day for having such a beautiful discussion. Um, about the topic, it's, it's a very vast and uh, elaborate one and a lot of perspective is going to come. I know my viewers will have another perspective to that. But yes, uh, there are a few things which as an educator, we will uh, put a light on. And um, to tell you that AI to wobbles, uh, it, it's, a, it's a big ocean of uh, information. Standardized testing, another one. So it's going to be um, a great uh, discussion on that. And uh, we are very, very open in this 21st century for all the perspective. But yes, culminating into something which is um, meaningful and relevant. Absolutely. Very well said, ma'am. Uh, Nitana, can I have you sharing your uh, views on this topic today? Thank you, Kanika. And uh, good evening, everyone who's watching us today. And it's actually a very relevant topic because... Uh, I think as educators and whoever's listening to us today, we have actually going into a phase of unlearning, learning and relearning, which I keep talking about because with AI having its intervention uh, and uh, you cannot today tell a student should not use that as a tool because I think all stakeholders, including parents and everybody is using that tool. So how are we making it as an enabler is something that's going to unravel with Kanika's, you know, uh, questions that's going to come up to us, which will help you all understand how we decode this topic further. So looking forward to everyone's views on it as well. Thank you so much. Uh, Ritika, what's your, your take on this? Good evening, everyone. So I definitely think this topic is uh, very vast and uh, debatable as such, because in today's time where standardized testing is important from college's point of view, you know, because we have so many, uh, the essays can be copied 
but you know uh, what are they looking at standardized testing maybe those scores can tell us okay is the child smart enough or not so yes uh, we have to definitely look at the challenges that uh, ai is uh, giving us and also you know what are the disadvantages of using an ai thank you so much and i think we very rightly said this is a very hot topic which is ongoing and uh, me being a mother and a counselor i think this is something that completely is is on my mind always so this brings me to my first question which i think uh, uh, ruchika ma'am i would like you to uh, answer for me that uh, how do you perceive the role of standardized testing in today's uh, educational landscape especially with the rise of uh, advanced ai tools thank you so much for the question uh, kanika uh, coming to my perspective on that uh, let's come to a very ground reality and understand that uh, we were always having this standardized testing you know it's a traditional way of testing it's it's happening uh, whether it any any genre of any education sector or uh, it comes to you know employment it is happening at all levels now when uh, there is an intervention of ai tools when we talk about that so we have to have in a perspective whether it is going to help us whether it is going to you know give us lot of challenges on our standardized testing that is my one view on that and another thing also i feel is um, technology will evolve i mean let's have a very very fair and a open mindset on that that technology is going to evolve from this level to another level so this kind of disparity is going to come every year every month every week every second so as an educator and especially in the landscape of our sector where you know there are so much of uncertainties after covid we have already realized it so we also have to understand that the change what is happening so we have to adapt that change and keep going for it so what i perceive about this standardized testing is uh, it is already been going on and ai has enhanced it it's not like it has uh, you know make it uh, more challenging for us it has enhanced in many levels and we are been using it whether it is for admissions or whether it is for anything whether it is for even writing an essay or a mc script it has enhanced it so now we have to have some boundaries set you know and there has to be some boundaries set and also more power to be given to standardized testing so more power to be given more power to the educators and still we have lot of questions to be answered in the course of our discussion definitely we'll get few answers to it so as how i perceive it it's like it has to go hand in hand we we cannot go away from it absolutely and and like you rightly said ma'am i think i should have asked this question to you much before you you mentioned writing and uh mc script also i wish i would have connected with you earlier i would have written my script i wouldn't have to rag my brains as much and you rightly even uh, pointed out that you know with the with the changing and the growing uh, technology we we just i think we are growing with it but i think the question that arises now is that what are the potential challenges and opportunities presented by ai uh, technologies especially in the context of uh, standardized testing and that is something i would want uh, rithika to please uh, answer for me so what would be your take on it thank you kanika for the question so uh, looking into challenges first uh, i think uh, ai uh, definitely uh, is trained on data sets you know that over represents a particular culture so definitely you know particular language and culture is over represented because that's the feedback uh, we give in our data sets so definitely what we are doing is it might give us inaccurate assessment of learning you know for a lot of uh, children who are not from that particular culture so that is one uh, major problem when we are using ai okay second is uh, data privacy that's uh, another challenge that we might face uh creativity i think is uh, dying because we are using artificial intelligence in lot of things so uh, you know uh, there was this uh, teacher from who won the disney teacher of the year he said like what are we teaching our children we are not educating them anymore what we are doing is we are just uh, you know teaching them to pass so you just get this score and you are done so are we educating them are they learning new things that's a big challenge and fourth thing i think is reachability 
you know are we reaching the right uh, like everybody uh, the underprivileged children you know those people are they uh, you know they are being left out because we are using ai that's a big question because standardized tests okay it's based on the assumption that all the pupils you know they have the same set of questions in the standardized tests and uh, again uh, it's the same questions in the same language in the same format in the same sequence and what i always tell my students is uh that you know how it differs is because you are from an icc curriculum or an ib curriculum and somebody sitting in china is from their chinese curriculum and why colleges require this uh, standardized test is all of you can be viewed from the same angle okay but that is one benefit but it is also a disadvantage in the sense because all the children don't get the same socio economic uh, background when they are gro uh, growing up or the same Absolutely. opportunity you know mm -hmm. some people might have uh, access to technology some people might have access to uh, coaching centers but not everyone has so that's one important thing reachability i think uh, and the last point of challenge is academic integrity that's something we are always talking about plagiarism and we are an ib curriculum school we are talking about how we can talk about critical thinking but the point of uh, academic integrity so how do we uh phase that that's a huge challenge how how do we make sure that all our children are following that so these are the challenges uh some of the opportunities which i feel ai uh, definitely gives us is it personalizes the whole learning process uh, yes so a child who is taking these tests maybe mock tests online uh it's it's uh, the ai actually generates okay where is that child actually having that problem in which section is the child doing badly you know so it will actually generate a learning system for the children okay th these are the you are doing badly in the math section say or you are doing badly in the english section so you need to focus there so the child can get an personalized learning system so i think that is where uh, ai can be beneficial uh, it automates the admin tasks i have already seen like you know today was sat we conducted it in the morning so what we saw was earlier there was a lot of admin tasks as uh, yes. a lot of paperwork that you had to go yeah. through yeah we yeah. had to do lots of things like checking in this that but uh, today it was like okay check in and uh, we don't have to read the instructions there were not like huge instructions that we had to read pages of instructions it was all on their computer screen every student had their individual timing so you know and one student was late so we are like no problem you join in and you'll finish whenever so that uh, automating admin task is a huge advantage i think when we are doing standardized testing uh, provide a real time feedback so you know which a student has to wait for the teacher to correct if it's a paper pencil test but Absolutely. if they're taking a mock test uh, online immediate feedback so automatically the child is like okay this is uh, the uh, the feedback i get so i think that's a big advantage um another thing what i saw with sat is questions can be in random order so a person sitting for, you know first and second third fourth everyone's questions are different in a are different, different yeah yeah so when it's a uh, that thing can be done very well by ai and uh, last advantage i think is uh, deliver questions which we cannot deliver on paper and pen like you know multimedia questions which ai can just show a video and then make a question based on that that's one big advantage i feel which uh, ai absolutely. can absolutely yeah absolutely very well summarized uh, ritika thank you so much because i think yes there is a vast range of uh, opportunities as well as equal challenges that we are going to face however i just wish and hope that there's some ai that can get the children to to listen to their parents i don't know when will that come up by the way but then uh, another thing i think as being a school counselor that i i come across and i'm very sure very many of us would and very many people from the audience also would be uh, agreeing with me on on this that uh, how can schools ensure that the integrity of the standardized tests especially in an era where students have uh, you know full access <laughs> to ai writing assistance how can that happen and nitin i would love to hear you on uh, on this that how can that be taken care of thanks kanika for that question and ritika your answer was absolutely insightful and there will be some overlaps of that of of you know the uh opportunities that uh, ritika spoke about but you know i always feel as an educator we have a huge responsibility on us 
whenever we are proctoring or whenever we are using an AI tool, we also need to know what's what is coming with it is its positives and also what as educators do we need to be mindful of? Yeah, because students will leverage what they have to, given that what makes it easier for them. But we need to understand uh, letting, allowing them to leverage that. How are we ensuring that the sanity of what needs to be given to them is kept intact? So there are a few pointers which I was trying to write down when I was you know, thinking about this was, um, you know, it, schools could actually look at enhance the proctoring of these tests. Because um, especially as college counselors, we've realized that, you know, the exit exams from school, which are the formal exams of any board is, is taken in a certain way, but the entry level exams to undergrad spaces are normally more AI based now, like SAT went online and many other. So I think implementing in lack of a better word, I would say stricter proctoring methods during these tests can help deter cheating. Uh, this could involve live proctoring, AI-based proctoring softwares that monitors students during the exams. That could be one, uh, you know, point is like enhance the proctoring. Uh, then the second is, you know, what about the AI detection tools? Now that we are using, um, you know, um, AI and we're using, in a, in a, you know, looking at standardized testing in a chat GPT era where all of us are looking at chat GPT as one of the tools, um, you have to look at uh, detection tools that can identify the content generated by AI. Yeah, or, or those resembling AI generating generated text. So, you know, one could flag off or, you know, red flag the suspicious patterns or content that deviates from a uh, from a student's usual writing style. You know, when there's a summative essay writing thing, uh, you know, which is AI based, then one can say, oh, this is not really truly the style of my student's writing. And one can immediately figure it out that it's proctored by something else. Um, also, but the third point here that I feel that could be looked at is that adaptive testing. Um, you know, I think, uh, uh, as I said, when we were talking about the initial conversation around uh, what is this topic about, and I said, there has to be a lot of unlearning, learning and relearning. And I really emphasize on that in today's time. Um, design tests that require critical thinking, design tests that require problem solving, personal reflection which makes it more difficult for AI generated content to meet the test requirements effectively. So that could be looked at it. Um, Ritika did mention that, uh, you know, design unique questions. So that's the fourth point, you know, unique questions or timed test. Um, you know, give them uh, unique questions or time constraint tests so that, you know, they know that within this time frame they have to finish that. That reduces the feasibility of using external assistance. Yeah. Uh, uh, the other point that that is very important is education on academic integrity. And that's not only for uh, students, but I think all us for, as educators, as well as for parents, if there we have any parents who are listening to us here today, is education on academic integrity, understanding what does that mean? If today my child is finishing a formal school education in school, you know, for a couple of years and getting ready for college, uh, doing a certain kind of curriculum, which is not enabling the child enough to understand what research is all about, then have a culture of uh, academic integrity and the consequences of, you know, cheating and creating a culture within the school campus that um, that actually, you know, it's an ethos and cultures in the value system of the school that says that this is an unethical assistance. Absolutely. Yeah. So that could be one uh, thing that we could look at. And, um, you know, I, I feel I know this is a little difficult, but I'm a strong believer that it can test variability. You know, keep changing the test formats, keep changing the test questions. Of course, I understand for one or two years, you can keep it in a certain way. I mean, when we look at CUET, I think every year they keep changing what they have to say. There's a change in the format um, so that it minimizes effectiveness, uh, you know. And um, while the World Economic Forum talks about this, that, uh, you know, many uh, jobs will be taken over by AI, my last and the most important point is a human review to this entire thing. Uh, incorporate human uh, assessment where possible. While AI can assist in flagging suspicious content, human evaluators can provide a very nuanced analysis and judgment to everything. So I feel no matter how many jobs will be taken away, but there'll be a lot more that will be coming in. Um, and I think as educators, we'll never be out of work. There's more for us to do in that space. So I'll, I'll rest my answer here, Kanika. Thank yeah. you. 
Thank you, Nitha. Uh, uh, Nitha, I think that was very wonderfully said, and I would really, really agree with the point that I think a lot of adaptability needs to come in right now for all of us to kind of completely embrace the new AI. And thank you so much as a, I think as an uh, educator, as a, and, and as a counselor, but for all the counselors who are listening into us, I'm sure that they would have made notes of the points that you've mentioned. Especially when, and I have especially made a note of that point where it says that I need to look for tools where I can really check and the human connect. So, which which brings me to another question, and uh, uh, Ruchika, ma'am, this one goes for you. Where I need to understand that that means that there is a lot of evolving that that needs to happen. So, you know, a new evolution, a new era, probably is what we're talking of. So, where in so in what ways might standardized uh, testing need to evolve? to remain a relevant and fair measure of student ability. That's what I would want to know. Okay, <clears throat> I was listening very, uh, you know, uh, with, a, with a lot of focus on Ritika and Nitinas. So what I'm uh, understanding as an educator, since we all are learning from this discussion, it's very good to have AI tools. It's very good to have this standardized testing, but what about teaching and learning? This is a very important aspect we have to understand since we are talking about the end, end part where we are assessing and evaluating the child, right? So one is the traditional way of standardized testing and there is an enhancement of AI tools. Now my question comes to me, to myself, is like, uh, you know, what about my teaching and learning? Uh, is my teacher equipped enough for having a standardized testing with this tool which is fair and relevant? That's the first question I have. And secondly, we need to do a backward design. You know, we need to build up our teaching community, you know, to an aspect that these areas have to be taken care. Even Absolutely. if it is a standardized testing, even if it is a, you know, testing with an AI tool, because everything is available. It's like it's, with a click of a mouse, you can get any kind of information. So data is, uh, these days, it's, it's a gold for all of us. So now the thing is, like, how do we, how do we do it? You know, how, uh, the thing is how to make it more relevant. If, mm -hmm. if I go for a, if a child goes for any kind of exam today, should not feel, oh, I didn't have this uh, kind of a tool, so I'm not able to do it. So this is one thing where the relevance part come, fairness come. So reachability, accommodation of children from the diverse background, Ritika has already mentioned that, which is not reaching. You know, that kind of a geographical um, issues are there. If I talk about my own country, India, I have IB schools coming up. I have, you know, numerous kind of curriculum running in India right now. Mm -hmm. What about our national curriculum? We talk about NCF, we talk about NEP 2020. Uh, we do our catering it. These are the aspect of creativity, you know, critical thinking, 21 centuries. Still all are embedded in NCF and NEP 2020. It's came, now it's been three years. Let's come to the ground reality. Since I am in a field where I am building up a team where these core competencies are there for teachers, so what I feel is like what I'm feeling as a challenge is to have that teaching community to be built up in a stronger manner. Because after all, uh, when we make these assessments, it is, it is starting from a very ground level with a, you know, kindergarten, early years to every, every level has these assessments happening. So by the time the child comes to class 12, you know, it comes to the under going for an undergrad course coming from any kind of curriculum they all have to face one kind of standardized testing which is happening in India, right? Now, where are we failing? Where are we failing in that? In, we are failing in the creativity part. We are failing in the part where uh, the reachability of these AI tools is not there for diverse group. So there is, has to be a very critical thinking, I feel, uh, has to be done on that, on the backward design. On the backward design of making a robust and a, you know powerful uh, teaching community who understands it, before making the test, you know, our kind of test is developed by us only, or whether the test is being taken by the AI tools or being generated by AI tools. So it is at all the levels. Okay, so the start is from the, uh, you know, very core level where the teaching and learning start. So that process also I feel has to be fair and relevant, so that by the time we come to the standardized testing, the output is also fair and relevant. So this is my thought on that, which uh, needs a lot of, uh, you know, um, a deliberate uh, thinking of all the educators of India and abroad, that uh, how are we going to do it? You know, how are we going to make it generalized? How are we going to yeah. make it uniform? So that, you know, such kind of, because it's, it's never ending. 
I already quoted in my first sentence that it's the first step. It's we have just come. We have stepped into it now. So we are going to step a little more deeper into it in the world of AI. So yes, uh, this is my take on that. That yes, it has to be very very relevant and fair at all levels, starting from the scratch. So scratch is from the teaching and learning process. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you for answering it so uh, beautifully for us, ma'am. Uh, Nitin, I uh, I would like to come back to you. And uh, like we we were just uh, discussing how this needs to evolve now, so this this also brings up another question. I mean, uh, you know that we need to understand is that uh, what are the alternative forms of assessment that could be considered to complement or uh, replace the standardized tests in the future? Now that we are talking of uh, evolution of such tests and you know these tests coming in, everyone learning the, the teaching learning process that Nam was just talking about so i would want to know your your thoughts on this that what would be the alternate forms of assessment it's a very very interesting question i think uh, cbse has also said i think rolled out uh, um, you know i i saw a clipping in an article yesterday which says that no more marks or uh, you know uh, that they're going to be giving so that also says that then truly uh, what is going to be the the dipstick what's going to be the baseline uh, and, you know, of course, it will take its own uh, organic evolution of when it starts to actually uh, uh, come into place. But uh, it's a very pertinent question. And today's generation, uh, I think, and I keep saying all the time as, as I've been, as I meet many students and parents, I realize that we have a generation which is a lot smarter. We have a generation which can compartmentalize things a lot better than us. Um, but I think it's it's somewhere our uh, uh, you know we need to up, upgrade our own uh, you know adequacies uh, to say that how can we fit in you know it's like a jigsaw puzzle to say what kind of a uh, I feel that every learner is different and there's a learning style to every child but it's about being adequate as an as an environment which becomes an enabler for them to say that yes we are actually uh, you know figuring out knowledge i think it's all around us but what skills is the child truly really learning in the environment that the school's giving them and uh, also the capabilities you know are we really making the child student of tomorrow capable so i think um, as i was trying to put some points together kanika with this that what are the other forms is of course um, one and i think all educators or all teachers or all uh, parents or students, whoever's listening to us today would agree that project-based assessments is one way that one could look at it. Um, when you assign a project, you also talk about, as Ruchika Ma'am was earlier saying, the 21st century skills. I think that organically comes to flow when you see a group of team working together that, you know, which is the one who's a sleeping partner in the group and which is the one who's a go-getter in that group. Um, so that, uh, that cohesiveness uh, requires critical thinking, problem solving, creativity and um, and you know students can also see that they're able to give closures uh, to things that have been initiated during the time frame so through pre uh, presentations and creative outputs so they see something that's that's being born through a project and they see giving it a closure in front of a jury or whatever is the method so that's a good way to assess students there I think another point here could be portfolio uh, you know, and I feel that um, while allows, you know, advocate student agency, allow students to make their own portfolios and showcase their achievements and their pro pro projects, you know, have like a student learning walk where the students are either depicting it through the essays or through their achievements uh, or projects or artwork. I think today when we are living in a world, we are living in a world where we need to understand to integrate the arts into the science and the science into the arts. Yeah, we are no more working in silos today. So art is only about designing and all of that. Art is also about in mathematics, how do I identify art? In structures, how do I identify art? So I think that's the beauty of portfolios. That's one. Um, and uh, third uh, point here that I was thinking when I was putting it together is performance assessments. Eval evaluating students based on their performance in real life scenarios or simulations you know, related to their field of study. Suppose, as I said, every student has a different learning style. So group the students together in a class and uh, give them a real life problem. 
you know, uh, so probably suppose there's a student who's wanting to study uh, biology. I'm from just taking that example. Uh, that then, you know, in that field of study, you could have include clinical assessments for medical students or practical assessments for engineering or students, design students. Now, what's happening today when we speak is I know uh, that today, you know, while children pa pass out of engineering institutes and in India, you have lots of engineering institutes. But when I look at those same students applying for jobs i and i know of somewhere you know a lot of these hr people you know first want to understand the level of engineering that these students have done before they hire them so interview is the second round the first is what is their engineering skills so i think if we look at performance assessments while they are with us i think that will be a very good way to look at it beyond standardized testings uh, another very uh, uh, important point, Kanika, which I kept thinking about, and that works well for us also as educators, is peers, peer and self-assessment. I think this 360 view where uh, as educators, we leave aside our own biases and prejudices with before we, you know, form a, uh, you know, uh, we, where we invite our students to a non-judgmental space. We also say that, you know, uh, let, let the students be evaluated by their own peers. Or how does the student himself evaluate? What's his, his or her own self-assessment? So that's also a, a, a parameter of reflective learning. Yeah. And a deeper understanding of, oh, my God, my teachers work very hard to, to design assessment, assessment criteria. Because for them, it is very easy to say that, ma'am, really, how did you put this? But once they do it on their own, they walk that walk and talk that talk, they'll understand that... Uh, you know, uh, this is very, very important. Another was um, which which you could replicate to what I said earlier about uh, performance assessments where you give them real life situations. You should also think about authentic assessments where um, you, uh, and I, I keep getting the World Economic Forum into my conversations. This is a, it's a future of the careers that the world of work that they haven't yet heard about Give them some, uh, you know, uh, uh, some stimulation of that so that, you know, through quizzes, uh, through discussions, through, you know, um, uh, through all of that, you know, real life uh, experiences, if they, if they do that, then that will be really, really uh, where they'll be able to mirror the real world challenges. Like um, computer science, we've spoken about mm -hmm. right? environment is now in a coming in a very big way. So, you know, environment could be one of the ways that they could look at. And of course, um, very conventional, but I think, again, a very good one is that uh, formative assessments is one uh, tool that you could look at. Um, also, open-ended questions. Let it be. I mean, let's see how creative can they get. And uh, I, a, a very strong believer that I am is, and I think COVID has taught us, is that, you know, the world's become a lot more fluid. We've Absolutely. been able to break barriers. So, I mean, setting uh, assessments based on cultural and contextual uh, spaces, you know, I think which will give children uh, to have a, have a lens of diverse diversity, have a lens of equity and being more inclusive. So if we set up those, I think it'll be, uh, it'll give them some context. These are some form of assessments we could look at. I've taken a little more time than than required. Kanika, back to you quickly. Thank you. Thank you, Nitana, for, for all that uh, insight. And I think that makes a lot of sense. There's a lot of, I think there's a lot of fluidity that we are in right now. And to understand these uh, alternatives that you've just uh, given, I think it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I'll quickly be running into my next question, which is posed to you, uh, Ritika, that uh, what measures can be taken to prepare both students and uh, educators for the changing dynamics of testing and assessments due to the AI uh, intervention? Now that we've seen that, yes, a lot can be done, a, a lot of challenges are there. So this one is over to you. Okay, thank you uh, for your question. And uh, yes, we know that uh, there's no going away from AI. There's no running away from AI. AI is and we have to accept it. So what, what else can we do? Uh, yes, integrate digital literacy and AI awareness in the classrooms. So we have to accept it. So we need to integrate it in, in our curriculum. We have to have uh, sessions for our students where we are telling them about artificial intelligence, what to use it and how to use it. Very important ethical and responsible use of AI. So uh, even uh, the IBO, you know, uh, it published um, on its website, like, uh, okay, they are, if they are using chat GPT, you know, for doing the IAs, 
they have to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, cite it you know that's so important so when the ibo is also saying uh, uh, that yes we there is something that we have to accept it we can't go away from it it's like uh, cited and see what you have understood from that thing. So we have to ensure students understand the basics of AI, its capabilities and its limitations also. Because AI is not like what everything the AI is saying is correct. There might be a lot of things where AI is not giving you the authentic uh, authors or the because sometimes it's just taking in information from here and there because it's a lot of data. Yeah, I know. And I think keywords would play a very keywords. major yes, role. And and yeah. uh, look at chat GPT. So, uh, you know, you'll see a lot of LinkedIn posts where it says uh, chat GPT is, uh, you know, giving us all wrong data. And in between, there was a lot of criticisms about it. But yeah. again, uh, what went correct was it, it, it spoke about how, you know, uh, you give it the right prompts and it will generate the right answers. So it's all about uh, how we ask our questions. So that's what we need to teach our children also. You know, ask the questions in this way and okay, do not take everything that AI is giving you. Interpret it, you know, uh, evaluate what they are giving you, uh, AI is giving you. Read those, uh, Have your do your own critical thinking and then write. Absolutely. Very, very well. So for Students, I think this is something what I feel. And for educators, uh, we even we have to accept our students are going to use it. We are going to use it. I think everyone is using it, be it corporate employees or everyone, like be it big uh, professors. So professional development on AI. You know, we, we need, uh, that's the need of the R. We need to get experts uh, during our workshop sessions on Saturday and special sessions. And uh, we have to do, professional development session for teachers on artificial intelligence. Uh, that's one important thing. And also uh, ensure uh, that the teachers also, they are not relying completely on AI. So if AI is saying something, the teachers do not just interpret the answers in that way. They have to also rely back on their traditional way, the way they were correcting and interpreting answers. Yeah, so, I think that, that human element stays there. Like, Nitana yes. said that we don't need to worry for it as much to take over because whatever it is, the human element stays there. So we cannot completely go away with it. Exactly. I would I agree with you. And uh, I quite liked when Nitana said uh, about the portfolio, you know, we... Uh, so if a child is, uh, you know, making a psychology, we are right now making only art portfolios. So why not a psychology portfolio? Why not a biology portfolio? So that will give the university a better idea whether this child is you know, uh, fit for my university or not. So we always talk about the fit. Any university you talk to them, they say, uh, don't look at the rankings, look at the fit, where the child it's will fit in. So I think the portfolio helps uh, the student also. Okay, and even the university gorge better, whether they are the right fit for that university, more than these standardized tests. Thank you. I think that is very, very rightly said. And as all of you have pointed out that, yes, it's a time to change. It's a time to evolve. And uh, Itana rightly said that we need to look at a 360 degree view rather than just, uh, you know, living in uh, silos. So I think I would agree with, with, with most of the points there, which, which brings me to my closing question where I would quickly uh, like to have your, uh, you know, all three of you speaking on that just for about, I think I can give you 30 seconds. There is a positive time. We are running into very many panels, uh, very many interesting panels later than this also. So uh, we can have begin with you, uh, Ruchika ma'am, where I would want views from all three of you. Uh, the, and I would want you to talk on that. How do you think that educators and po uh, policy makers work together to maintain equity in assessments amid the growing accessibility of AI tools. So I would like to love to hear your closing uh, remarks, all three of you. Thank you. I hope I'm audible. Yes, you are. Please, please go ahead. So, uh, just to wrap it up, since I got so much of insight from Ritika and Nitina, it was wonderful because there were so many things you had put the light on it. Um, what I feel is all the stakeholders are very, very important. All the policy makers are important, educators. And there is one thing which has been a buzz from last so many years. We talk about agency, we talk about you know student agency has been talked about it. There is another is teachers' agency. You know, having a voice choice and ownership for teachers to plan it now, you know, giving them that force back, especially when it comes to equity. 
be more power and more empowerment to the teacher. So, as a last uh, closing statement, I would uh, like to say this only, and also uh, community engagement, equal stakeholding of all the community members, parents, teachers. Uh, students and also um, management level also so more voice choice and ownership let's come together the secondly there is one more thing coming in my mind is about global governance okay so we talk about a lot of governance uh, nationally now it has to be internationally done so there has to be a lot of talks on that there has to be a lot of policy making on that which is you know educational global governance in the area of ai using ai uh, and also standardized testing to be more fair and relevant. So thank you so much. That's my last take on that. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Nitana, we would love to listen to you next. I'll be very quick. Uh, for me, there are two points that I put together. One is awareness and training uh, to you know empower educators to design assessments that minima minimize biases and ensures fairness, right? And my second is ethical guidelines and policies. Um, you know, uh, ensure that uh, there is fairness, there's transparency and equity uh, at both educational institutions and government levels to regulate the use of AI in assessments. You know, we can't get overboard with it. We can't stay without it. So let's look at a fair balance there. That's from my end, Kanika. Thank you. Thank you for dropping it up. And uh, Ritika, last, last but not the least, we'd love to listen to you. So uh, I'll also be quick. Two points that I had uh, jotted down was sharing of best practices, because if you're maintaining equity, if each one of us uh, share our best practices, uh, it will be helpful and uh, equal access to technology. So we, we talked about the reachability and the underprivileged children not getting the uh, you know, access to technology. And here we are talking about equity. So this is one important point that we should have, like equal access to technology. Thank you. Wow, I think that was one one powerhouse of discussion that we had here. So we had, I think the the mother in me, the the counselor in me, uh, you know, the teacher in me was all in, involved. And because this it's a very relevant topic that I would want to talk about, and I think all of us would want to talk about, and we are we are doing it. So very quickly, I would just want to wrap it up with the key takeaways that what we discussed today. So we're talking of the evolution of the assessments here that with the uh, advent of this chat GPT or the AI technologies, it definitely prompts a re-evaluation of traditional standardized testing, you know, signaling a shift in how we assess students and their learning potential. So very well said where we have to look at a complete 360 degree assessment, assessment of life skills, and where we also talk of evolving, more evolving for our teachers, and evolution for our students, guiding them right, understanding how and you know how to make the maximum use of technology and not be scared of it. Just not think that, oh, this is something new as, as teachers, as parents, as students. So I think it's it's time for all, uh, all of us to embrace it beautifully rather than thinking that, oh, this is something that we are averse to. So I think we, we can encourage it, but we need to educate as, uh, as well. Definitely the relevance and uh, efficacy, where I say that there's a pressing need to examine the continued relevance and efficacy of the standardized testing in the light of AI advancements. Also an educational paradigm shift, where this discussion underscores the broader paradigm shift in education, emphasizing the importance of adapting assessment strategies to align with the evolving landscape of AI and its impact on learning Methodology. So, which was very, very beautifully, I, I would say, discussed and told by each one of you. Very uh, enlightening. And at the end, I would say there was a, there is a, there is a need to balance the uh, tradition and innovation. So, where wherever we go, no matter what era we are, we are Gen Z or the. Now, I think there is another uh, term used for the generation, which my daughter keeps telling me, and I keep forgetting. So they they call me. They say you're a noob. I don't know what that means, but in the Gen Z term, that means someone who's just very old doesn't know, right? So I think that's where I say, where I say we need to balance the tradition and innovation. And that's what we've all uh, discussed about. So I think in, in summary, I think the debate on standardized testing in the era of chat G, uh, GPT urges us all to question, adapt, 
and collaboratively shape the future of educational assessments in a world increasingly influenced by AI technologies. With this, I would like to thank all my panelists for their time, for uh, all their insights, for having this very fruitful uh, discussion with us. There are a few questions and I think I can just ask the uh, audience to send them over to the uh, HSM team so that we can post those to the panelists and get the answers for you. Thank you so much for all, uh, all of you for your time and for joining us here today. Have a great evening ahead. Thank you so much, Kanika. You were wonderful. <laughs> thank you, Chikam, for yeah, putting thank me. Thank you, Sina. Wonderful thank uh, having a good interaction with all of you. Thank you. Thank so you. Thank, thank you so much. Everyone. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening.